when applications are using JSON web tokens, the expiration of the token is carried in the token itself. It's not like a traditional session management where the server is keeping track of the user's activity, but the timestamps are actually in the token contents. And like a lot of things with JSON web tokens, this is best seen by example. So we have a web page here that displays some information that it gathers from an API, and the API is authenticated with a JOT. We refresh the page. We'll cause the page to go gather data. Since we're capturing the packets with Burp Suite, we can go look at this transaction in the background. So we see the page went out to this endpoint called jwt.php, and it authenticated itself with a jot right here, and we can grab that. And since we have the JSON Web Tokens plugin for Burp already installed, we can right click and say, send selected text to the JSON Web Tokens tab. And this extension is available in the Burp store, even for the free edition of Burp. This extension will go ahead and decode the jot and breaks down the different components here. And part of what we see is there's this IAT, and then there's also this EXP. Well, the IAT is the timestamp when the jot was created, the initiated at timestamp. And then we have the EXP or the expiration. You'll notice that these are represented as integers. They're actually in epoch time, the number of seconds since 1970. And so they can be conveniently represented as integers, but it also means we could do things like subtract them from one another. So you'll see that they're basically the same up to right about the fourth digit from the end. So you basically have 4,057 minus 2,257, and you end up seeing that this is good for about 1,800 seconds. So what you do is you have to take the 1,800 seconds and divide it by 60 to figure out that you have right around 30 minutes of time. So we can calculate the, the timeout period. It's also important to notice that this is an absolute timeout. So usually when you're using the session management, if you keep using the site, the server restarts the clock and you, know, you still have another 20 minutes or 30 minutes before the session expires. And you can almost use the site indefinitely unless the site has an absolute timeout. But those relative timeouts are based on activity. The JOT is timing out based on a fixed point in time, so an absolute timeout. Now, some applications uh, don't actually check the expiration of the JOT. So you can take a JOT from a previous visit and you can play it back to the application. And if the application doesn't check to see if the JOT is expired or not, it might actually accept the JOT and say, well, the signature is good. So it just goes on about its business and doesn't even think that the user uh, might be replaying a JOT from the past. And this can be a, a problem if the user used to be allowed to do things in the application but shouldn't be allowed to do stuff anymore. And uh, somehow the user is you know, kind of pulling one over on the application. But in any case, now you see how these timestamps work and how to calculate the session timeout. And if you want to know more about epoch time, uh, definitely check that out. But it's just a way of representing time in a convenient, short integer format, which makes it easy to serialize. It makes it easy to, to do math on, to compare two dates with one another. And it uh, also allows us to use this convenient integer format for the computer system so that uh, it's not hard to store or use the information. And of course, these can be converted back into regular date time objects in just about any programming language. So in summary, for your applications, be aware of how long the timeout is for the jots that you're using. Make sure that's not too long. And also 
make sure that the application actually respects the expiration date field and validates that when the JOC comes into the application. 